let's do some more freefall problems. So you throw a pumpkin down from a bridge with a velocity of four meters per second. It hits the ground in three seconds. How high is the bridge and how fast is the pumpkin going before hitting the ground? Okay, well, if I was going to draw this scenario here, you are on the bridge. It's like a, well, it's a cliff. Let's just call it a cliff. And then you're going to throw the pumpkin down. So here's the pumpkin. Fantastic. Looks exactly like an apple, except it's got, well, smiley. Okay. Now, instead of dropping this or throwing it up, you throw it down. So it starts with an initial velocity down, which would be negative 4, negative 4 meters per second. Okay, and that negative is really, really important. So let's make sure you can see it. Okay, so you throw it down with a negative 4 meters per second velocity. It hits the ground in three seconds. So the time it takes is, let's write this up here, three seconds. Now, without really knowing anything else about the problem, I know that G, since we're near the sur surface of the Earth and we're ignoring air resistance, is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration. Um, now, to figure out how high the bridge is, we are going to think about what is the initial height a question mark next to it because that's the thing that we're trying to find and we're going to say that at the ground at the bottom that that final position the pumpkin reaches is going to be zero um, choosing the the ground to be zero is a common thing in physics um, and in this case it's going to make it very easy for us if we think about all right what was the height that we started from if we ended at zero okay good so I've got time, I've got the acceleration, I've got the initial and final positions. So to figure out um, for part A how high the bridge is, I'm going to use this equation. Negative one half g t squared plus v naught t plus y naught because it has all of those variables inside of it. Uh, before I plug anything in, I'm going to get rid of anything that's zero and then rearrange to solve for y naught, the thing that we're looking for. So uh, the only thing that's zero is the final height, y equals zero. So negative one half g t squared plus v naught t plus y naught. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's the only thing that's zero. Okay. So to figure out what the initial height is, y naught, to solve for that, I'm first going to add one half g t squared to both sides. And then I'm going to subtract v naught t from both sides. So that's how I'm going to solve for the initial height. Um, and then I plug all of my information in. So half of 9.8 meters per second squared times 3 seconds, the whole thing squared, minus a negative 4, that's important, meters per second times three seconds. Okay, so this first term is going to give me uh, 44.1 um, and that's going to be meters. And then the second term is going to be a positive 12. So add those two together and you get 56.1 meters. So that is the initial height, and therefore the height of the bridge, uh, because that's where you drop, I'm sorry, through the pumpkin down from. All right, now let's work on part B. How fast is the pumpkin going before hitting the ground? Okay, so I've cleared some space for part B, um, and here I'm going to draw the pumpkin right at the ground. Remember, it's right before it hits the ground. Um, so it hasn't actually hit the ground yet. And there's going to be some final velocity that's much bigger. And we are trying to figure out what is that velocity when you've gotten to a height of zero. Um, now, I could use a couple of different equations to solve for this one. But the easiest equation is just going to be our straightforward velocity as a function of time. So negative gt plus v naught. Um, and in this case, I would use negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 3 seconds plus that negative 4 
meters per second. So I'm going to get a negative number plus a negative number, so my, my amount is going to get bigger. Um, and 9.8 times 3 seconds is 29.4, so it's negative 29.4 seconds cancel meters per second, minus 4. So that's going to give me a negative 33.4 meters per second for the final velocity. Uh, and it makes sense that it's negative because this is a velocity that's going down right before it hits the ground. Um, make sure you don't think that the velocity before the object hits the ground is zero. Uh, it's true that after this pumpkin like hits the ground and splatters or whatever, that it'll come to a stop. But when we're working with freefall problems, the final velocity is always the velocity that it reaches at the end of the fall, not the final velocity after it has hit the ground. So it's always before hitting the ground. All right, let's do one more problem. You throw up off a 40 meter building, literally. The velocity of your vomit is two meters per second upwards. What is the maximum height the vomit reaches? How long is the vomit in the air? How fast is the vomit going when it hits the ground? This is a classic throw up problem. Let's go ahead and draw, to the best of our ability, the vomit. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say the ground here eventually, we're gonna call this zero. Um, and why not? Our initial height is 40 meters. Now I didn't write y equals zero at the ground um, just because we're going to go back and use two different final heights. But anyway, the top of the building is 40 meters, so we put the ground at zero. And when I draw this throw up, I'll just draw the throw up, not you throwing up. That's <laughs> disgusting. So here's the throw up. Okay. It has an initial upward velocity, v naught. A positive 2. For part A, when you're asked to find the maximum height that the vomit reaches, we're going to say, okay, what is, here's the vomit on the top of its path, what is that height that you reach um, when you're at the very, very, very top and your velocity has been reduced to 0? Okay, so for part A, the information that it gives me is a initial height of 40 meters, an initial velocity of plus 2, and without saying it, part A requires that I know that at the maximum height, the velocity is 0. Now, I would make y my um, final variable, the thing that I'm looking for in this case. Now. We also know that in all these problems, the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, because g is 9.8 meters per second squared. So we know the acceleration without having to find it. Okay, notice that I'm given all of this information, y not v not v, y, and I know the acceleration, but I don't know time. That's a dead giveaway that I should use the ain't got no time equation, or the equation without time. Remember we replaced the acceleration with negative g, so it becomes negative 2g, um, and then this is delta y plus v naught squared, but it might be better for us to write y minus y naught instead of delta y, uh, because we're going to want to find that height that it reaches, and we know the initial position is 40. Okay, so um, to do that, first I'm going to plug in anything that's zero, so the final velocity at the maximum height is zero, so that goes away. And now I need to try and get um, the final height, uh, y, the final position by itself. This is going to prove to be a little bit tricky. First, I'm going to add this to both sides. Um, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 2g so that the 2 and the g goes away. And now I'm left with y minus y naught, which I can take that out of the parentheses now since nothing's being multiplied. Um, and I realize that to find the final height, y, I need to take uh, the y naught and add it to both sides. Okay, so now I have an equation to find the final height. The initial velocity is 2 squared over 2 times 9.8. I'm um, sorry, plus 
40. Now this is going to give me a height relative to uh, the top of the bill, or sorry, the ground at zero. Um, so it'll be a number above 40. So that's 4 meters squared per second squared over 19.6. The meters cancel one. The that's the second squared. Second squareds cancel. Uh, four over nineteen point six is point two oh four. So we'll just say point two plus that forty meters. So the maximum height that it reaches is forty point two meters. Uh, now again, that is relative to the top of the building of forty meters. Okay, great. Now, let's figure out how much time the vomit is in the air for. So part B. Um, and I'm going to get rid of this Y at the top. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and draw the entire path. Really goes straight up and down, but we're going to, just to make it easier for ourselves, give it a little bit of a curved um, path so that it looks like it's going up and then missing the edge of the building. Um, okay. So one way to figure out how long the vomit is in the air for uh, is to figure out how much time it takes to reach its maximum height and then figure out how much time it takes to fall um, from that maximum height. Doing so takes up a lot of time, so I'm just going to show you a very quick and easy way to do this. You know that the initial height is 40, and you know that the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared down you know that the initial velocity is plus 2. Um, and you know the final height is 0. And you would like to find time. Now if you go to your motion equations, the equation that has y0, v0, y, t, and a, or g, in it, is going to be this position equation. Negative 1 half gt squared plus v0, t, plus y0. Um, now, there are two things that you could do here to solve for time. One is you could plug in all of your numbers um, and try and get a, a solution for t. Now, if I did that, I'd get 0 equals negative 1 half 9.8 meters per second squared times t squared plus 40 meters times t plus the initial height of 40 meters. But this is going to be difficult because you can't easily solve for time. You can't easily get it by itself unless you recognize that this is the A term of a quadratic, this is the B term, and this is the C term. And in order to solve this, que this question, um, or to get an answer for time, you would have to use the quadratic formula. So you can use a quadratic formula to solve for time, or if you prefer, you can uh, not plug in zero for the final height, and just think of this as a graphable equation, with the a term being negative 1 half, 9.8, which is 4.9, um, and then the b term being 40, and the c term being 40. Oh, you know what? Sorry. This is supposed to be 2 meters per second. Sorry. So anyway, I can think of this as a graphable equation. Um, if I was to get rid of the units to make it a more friendly graphable equation, it would be half of negative half of 9.8 is 4.9 t squared plus 2 t plus 40. So I could write this as a graph-friendly equation. Then I can get my graphing calculator, and you would plug this into your y equals. So you press, let's start from the beginning, y equals, uh, then negative 4.9, you'd use x instead of t, plus 2 x instead of t plus 40. Okay, then you can graph this equation, and you would get a picture of how the vertical y motion changes with time. And to figure out how long it's in the air for, you just want to find this intersection right here where it goes to 0. Um, so that on your calculator is actually something that's called the 0. So to find that, you would go to second calc 0. Uh, it wants you to go to the left of the intersection, which I can't see the cursor right now. There it is, okay. So you go to the left of where your function crosses zero, press enter, then go to the right, press enter, 
guess you can just press enter and it will tell you that you will have a y which is this of 0 when you have an x value which for us is t of 3.068 so we'll say 3.07 so at 3.07 seconds you will be at the ground so that would tell me the amount of time it takes to hit the ground is 3.07 seconds okay good um, now that I know how long it takes to hit the ground I can work on part C part C asks how fast is the vomit going when it hits the ground well to find that velocity first I'm going to recognize that that velocity is negative definitely going to be negative because it's going down and it's going to be bigger than two meters per second so some negative number that's bigger than two um, and I could use basically any equation at this point the easiest would be to take advantage of the fact that I still know the initial velocity it's two meters a second um, and the acceleration is 9.8 uh, but now I know the time is 3.07 seconds so if I want to find the final velocity at 3.07 seconds I just use this equation and I don't even have to rearrange it so negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 3.07 seconds plus 2 meters a second okay that's going to give me uh, negative 30.086 um, and then one of the seconds will cancel so that's a meter per second plus 2 meters a second which is going to give you negative 28.086 or why don't we just say 28.09 meters per second as the final velocity right before the vomit reaches the ground. All right, congratulations. Um, you have done some example problems with the free fall motion equations, and now you are a superhuman that understands physics of falling objects. Congratulations, this video is done.